Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the big blue house. Stuff that's not blue. All right, court here, Kermit the Frog here. All right, so listen, for all my newbies, all right, because I think I'm gonna attempt to figure out how to hashtag this story, okay? So a lot of you won't even be aware that I'm a tarot reader. Um, so I'm going to explain my side of the story. And another reason why I think it's so important to tell this type of story is because it really boils down to important self-discoveries when you're on a journey. Okay, When you begin a journey, when you start a journey, whether it's with somebody or it's with yourself. Okay. So basically, this is going to be my story on how I, ruin, how I ruined my relationship on my perspective. Okay, so you can take this perspective, you know, many different ways. Okay, did she really ruin her relationship? Did she really self dis or did she really self discover who she is? Okay. Um here's the thing. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. I was up all night. It it just like you you have these moments, especially with me, epiphany after epiphany. So I'm in bed. I finally go to bed at like eleven eleven o'clock at night. I'm like, all right, I'll shut everything down and I'll go to bed. And then I was like, I tell my story on YouTube. Okay, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna tell a little of my story on YouTube versus trying to explain it over and over to who I was gonna explain it to. And then I'm like, well, I'm tired of explaining it over and over. And I'm sure he's tired of hearing me explain something over and over. So I'm laying there. This story must have went through my head on how I was going to tell my story Okay, I must have played it out, I don't know, two or three times because I didn't go to bed until at least two in the morning, which is telling me this video is going to probably be at least a half hour, 45 minutes, if not a little longer. Um, and then I, I said to myself, like, why are you preparing? Why are you writing things down? Why are you scripting? Why are you doing this? Because I can't do that. So... Everything that I thought of last night that that made so much sense in my head on, on how I wanted to tell my story is going to be completely different. So I'm just going to go for it. And obviously, I'm a little nervous. Even being on YouTube every day, whenever I hit a milestone in my life, <clears throat> to explain the story is um, it's a little nerve-wracking. Okay, So just go with me. Just go with me, okay? Um, so this is basically my perspective on how I ruined my relationship. But it's also, okay, it's also an amazing love story that is, to me, priceless. And probably one of the best love stories of my lifetime. All right, so we're going to get into that. But before we get into that, I gotta tell you, <coughs> I gotta tell you how it all went down 24 hours before that. Because that part of my story is extremely important, and I'll explain that to you too, right? So for those who are going through breakups and makeups and can't figure things out and you're on a journey, this, this will really help you because a journey really is about self-discovery. And no matter who woke you up, when you were awakened, or even if you're not yet, okay, um, this will help you because it helped me. And this is why I'm on YouTube, all right? So, y'all ready for this? Me and my friend Marsh, okay, we were going through both difficult times in our lives and I remember it being like Thursday night we're catching the sun before the sun goes down we're in our backyard talking you know probably having a few drinks and 
totally out of the blue who are like let's just go camping totally last minute we do a lot of spontaneous stuff together so we didn't have the kids we were just like yeah we we need this you know it was a point in in my life too where it was why isn't this happening why isn't that happening why isn't xyz okay abc xyz one two three <laughs> um so we're like this is perfect okay so go home packing my stuff we get to the campsite now we know the weekend's gonna be a little shady with weather when the when the new england so hit or miss you know um so we knew we had to keep an eye on that. So we packed accordingly. So we get to the campsite. It's sunny. It's great. We get prepared. We set up shop. We're sitting there. We're having a blast. We're like, wow, thank God we did this. Just being outside in nature. Knowing for us, it was more of like a retreat. Um, to just clear our minds because we can do that, especially me in the nature. So, we're having a great day, we're out and about. The morning we got there, things were a little damp. This, this is important. <laughs> it really is, right? Because it just, I'll explain, I'll explain it to you. But I probably will go back and forth. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't turn me off because I have an amazing love story. All right? So... It's damp, clothes are getting wet, we're constantly changing in and out of situations, in, in and out of outfits, according to our situation. So we're going out, we're changing, we're wet, put on our shorts on, we go outside, we enjoy the day, we're downtown, we're having a blast. I think we even went out on a tiki boat that day. Um... It was sensational. We, I mean, we really did have a blast. So walking around, um, it was summer, so it was nice out. <clears throat> we ended up walking around town, going on the water, drinking, listening to bands, you know, outdoorsy stuff. Just enjoying each other. Um, so... There's nothing, like, really within that whole entire story that, well, I don't want to put it that way. I don't really need to give you, a, you know, step by step throughout the whole day, but you get you get the point. It was a great day at the lake, on the water. Later that night, we had a blast. We met some neighbors. We all hung out. And... There was like a there was like a gentleman there, so I was like, kind of feeling him, but not feeling him. We were drinking. I had no intentions on meeting anybody or seeing how the thing, the situation, how things like unfolded. Right. Needless to say, okay, by the end of the night, he ended up like completely kissing me out of the blue, and guys, it was so gross. His nose was running because it was cold out. Okay, so I got slobbered on. All right, and I was like, all right, like, not a thing. Like, once you don't know how to kiss me, it's, just, it's a complete turn off. And not to mention, I got slobbered on. <laughs> okay, slobbered from snot and saliva. All right, so that was the end of that night. The next morning, we woke up and we're laughing about it. Like, we thought it was, like, the funniest thing. Like, this is going to go down in history, right? It's like, fucking court. You should have just got your mind off of shit. You shouldn't even got involved with certain shit like that. Like, you shouldn't even have gone there. But I did. So, this is where the closed outfits kicks in. She wants to go out. She wants to go downtown. We're going to go get brunch. That ended up being lunch. Okay. I think we took showers. She's getting herself all ready. You know, and I'm like literally like makeup getting herself ready. And she's like, Cool, you gonna get yourself ready? And I'm like, For what? Like, we're going to brunch. 
Like I, all I need, and all I'm thinking right now is all I need is grease. All I need is something in my food from drinking from the night before. We all know how it is. Okay. The only thing on my mind was, was freaking food. Let's get dressed and go. So needless to say, because I went through like three outfits within 24 hours of that first day because of the weather. <laughs> All I had for that day that was comfortable was a pair of black scrubs and a yellow tank top with flip flops because my kicks were soaked. Okay. So I remember exactly, exactly what I had on. Um, and she's in the bathroom she's doing makeup she's like don't you want to put some makeup on do you want to you want to borrow a pair of my shorts and I'm like no girlfriend I'm good you know I'm, I'm good I, I don't need makeup I don't need this what I need right now is freaking food that's all I want is food so she's taking a little longer you know anywho we make it downtown we go to one of our favorite spots to grab lunch so meanwhile I'm even more excited because I'm already anticipating what we're gonna eat because we know we know the menu <laughs> so we get there we try this actually new fantastic appetizer with like artichokes and crostini and it was we ordered extra bread we didn't know what we wanted okay so we ended up getting a, a huge margarita pizza we ordered the appetizer twice and we got a chicken palm sub to split with like sweet potato fries okay all out like way too much food on the table like now at this point i believe she's drinking mimosas and i'm trying to chug water right and <laughs> well like why do we do this every time the amount of food is insane but well like let's just get the pizza let's get the large pizza because we can always take it home later take it to the campsite later Mind you, throughout the day, we knew, I forgot about this, we knew the weather was going to be awful. Okay, I should have told that story first. So we knew there was a massive storm coming, so we needed to get out of the tent and get into a camp or a cabin. I should have told this part first. So, we're like, what do we do? The, the new casino just opened up in Massachusetts, so we're like, we can get VIP, we can get XYZ, we, she knew people, she knew people. So we're like, do we go to the casino? It was the first, it was just opening, you know, and we're like, oh, I don't know. We can go and dance. We can stay here. We just did the band last night. I said, but in all reality, we really did come here to go camping. But because of the weather, we weren't sure what we were going to do. Finally, we're calling around. We couldn't find a place. We couldn't find a place. We're still calling. I come across this campground and ended up calling me back and was like, oh, we just had a cancellation on a camper. So I'm like, great, perfect, book it. Gave her the card information, ours. <clears throat> but something was telling us not to leave New Hampshire. Let's stay. We came here to enjoy ourselves and to be outside. So if worse comes to worse, the the pit is is shielded, covered, right? So we're good. We just need to find a different type of shelter because this type of storm thunder and lightning in New England. You never know what you're going to get, right? You really don't want to be in a tent. Not not with thunder. Not with lightning, I should say. So, we teetered back and forth for a good solid hour. Do we go back to Massachusetts or do we stay in the Hampshire? Needless to say, we don't even know how we got the place. It was, it was so busy up there. I don't know if it was close to like Midas motorcycle weekend or not but it was it was busy and um it was like that's that's weird we found a place so that's a sign we're gonna stay All right so we stayed and I'm so glad we stayed because I'm about to get to the love story so back to lunch okay we just got done eating all this food kind of got a little bit of a hangover, belly's a little upset, now it's, it's trying to settle, all right, and I'm pounding water on top of a full belly. So the whole, before I get to the love story, the whole point of, of that whole story is because I really wasn't looking. I had no intentions on meeting anybody, 
impressing anybody. I was content. I was content in nature. I was content with my friend. I was content because I wasn't worrying about life. Okay, I had let it go. No intentions, no expectations on how something was going to go. I, I just knew I needed that time. And we were really, 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 really having a good time. So, now, now here's the love story. Y'all ready for this? But again, that, that whole topic was so important because it's like that saying, when you least expect it or when you're not looking, okay? So, I'm telling you, that's, that's the truth, okay? Um, so, I'm excited. She's like, let's just go get a drink near the water. And I was like, because we were in the mills. And I was like, can't we just go back to the campsite, digest, lay on, lay on the lake, soak up the sun, because we don't know when the storm's coming, you know? And she's like, oh, court, can I just grab, like, one beer? Y'all know when your friend says, I just want one beer? It's like, oh, okay, great, great. Fine, fine. She's like, we'll walk there. We'll walk it off. We'll walk off some of the food. So by, by the time we get to the bar, a whole bunch of tiki bars outside near the water. By the time you get to the bar, you could be feeling a little better. Like, we both looked at each other. It was, like, less than a mile walk. Dying laughing, like, yeah, okay, you can tell me that, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with you. <laughs> I'm just dying laughing because no makeup, no hair product. I had to use her all natural soap in the shower so it didn't even smell like product. It, you know what I mean? She's all organic, everything. Black scrubs, flip flops, camping flip flops. Okay, the bottom of my feet were probably black from walking around barefoot. And not having the proper stuff to wash my feet in the shower and stuff. Because we're well, camping. I don't care about stuff like that. But I'm just dying. I'm dying inside because it's when you least expect it. You know? So finally, we're walking. Now mind you, there's probably like four restaurants, bars, four or five. They're all outside. It's, it's hot. It's the 17th. It's a Saturday. We're enjoying ourselves. So I'm just following her. And I'm thinking to myself. Why do we keep going back and forth? And now at this point. My body's doing something. Really strange. Like I was strutting my shit. Like as if I had like heels on or something. Like owning it. Right? So comfortable. It, w it was the oddest feeling. We walk by this one group. Bar is a little more crowded than all the other ones. We did. It, we saw two seats, but we're like, let's just. Well, she is like, let's just keep walking. So we keep walking. I had already spotted this little crowd, okay, of of guys. That's when my body started doing something. Like within like so many so much of vicinity you know what I mean like within like a certain vicinity of this group my body had already shifted and I picked up on it but didn't think much of it so she circles around now we go back to the same exact spot the bar where these this group of guys are so we sit at the bar okay. let me get ready for this one hold on So now we're sitting at the bar. Now the bar's behind me, mind you. The lake's in front of me. No, the lake's... The lake's behind me because the way we had to sit at the bar... Let me explain this to you because this is important too. So now, if I'm going to sit at the bar, my back's turned like this. The bar's right here. The bar's under. All this stuff. Now I'm thinking to myself, we can't really turn around because right directly in front of us was a tiny little bar stool on the sand and we already knew there was a group of guys sitting there so it's like awkward you know what I mean like it's literally so if you turn around my hands are up here on the bar and I'm looking at the water I'm literally looking at this group of guys the same exact distance I am from you now 
okay? So even the way I sat in the bar stool was very um, alluring. You know, it was, I could just feel my body and I even, I even turned to Mash at one point. And I said, just look behind us. I said, just tell me if this guy's staring at me. And she's like, Courtney, she's like, awkward. She's like, okay though, you know, she's like, what do you mean? Yada yada, I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm like, the my body's doing something I'm not used to my body ever doing. And I can, I can feel like his happy. Like it was, it really was that intense. So she turns around, I'm looking at a gorgeous cardinal right now on top of, on top of the trees covered in snow. Um, so she turns around, she's like, yeah, you know, he's definitely staring at you. And I was like, all right. She's like, he's got a nice smile. And I was like, okay. She's like, but don't worry about it. She's like, we're here to have a drink. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm not really worried about it. I'm like, she's like, court, please don't work. She's like, please don't work right now. You know, we're here to have fun. So I was like, okay, fine. So now at this point, our back is turned. So now I'm turned to you, okay? And it's kind of awkward because now I have the water behind me. And the whole reason for us to go to this bar was to sit near the water and have a drink. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to turn around. So now I'm staring at like one of the loves of my life. I already knew something was up. I could just feel it. So I'm this close. I turned around. I, I talk, right? I'm a talk. I'm a people person. So I was like, hi. I'm like, I know this is a little awkward. I said, but I, I really just want to look at the water, you know? And I really did. But I also wanted to get a glimpse of him. So they all start talking. They're like, yeah, no worries. Blah, 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 blah. We start shooting the shit, telling each other where we're from. We're all making friends. You know, they had onion rings. I remember being like, those look really good. You know, <laughs> I'm such a foodie. They're like, oh, you can have some, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, I'm like, we just ate. You can't imagine the amount of food that we just devoured, you know? But the whole time we're like talking, mind you, I'm still, I'm still eyeing these onion rings. Don't ask me why. So at this point, now I'm drinking beer, all right? We're all talking, we're all shooting the shit. We're having a blast. We're all strangers enjoying each other's company. They told us what they were doing. We were filling them in on what we were doing. You know, that type of stuff. So. We're just telling stories. You know how it goes when you meet people. <laughs> so. Next thing you know, you know, a couple hours are going by. We're still all sitting here yapping, chatting, telling our stories. Next thing you know, we're all taking shots at this point. We're all drinking beer, taking shots. Mash is so mellow. She's usually not like that. She normally doesn't drink shots. It was, it was just so ideal. I had met this person such, just by chance. It was su such a... A moment of serendipity but not even seeing it at first how everything played out perfectly and how everything was placed and how I felt okay. next thing you know I don't even know how it happened while at dinner okay while well, like want to go get a back bite to eat because now I, I'm telling you three or four hours had to have gone by of us just sitting chatting shooting the shit so now we go to dinner. This restaurant was on the water. We all walked there. It's right on the water. We wanted to eat outside on the patio. So it was probably like, it was because it was kind of like dim inside, but very like romantic lighting, dark candlelit type atmosphere, fireplaces, big open windows so you can see the water, the boats on the water, the moonlight shining. You know, everything you read in a book. So, <clears throat> they're like half hour, 45 minutes. We're like, all right, well, we'll you know, we'll wait. We'll wait our turn. We're all shooting the shit, having a blast. 
somehow I ended up on the dock with him. Everybody else is waiting under the patio, drizzling a little bit, no big deal. I really don't even know how me and him ended up on the dock. So I'm sitting down, my toes are barely touching the water. You know me, I'm a water person. I couldn't get, like, so my flip-flops are off, sitting at the dock, our legs are swinging. We're looking into the water, we're looking at each other. We just start telling each other's business, like, as if we have known each other forever. This is my situation, this is his situation. Tell me about past, future, present, what they want to do, children, all this stuff. I remember at one point even sitting on the dock, me telling myself, man, I really just want to jump in this water because my toes wouldn't touch. And I think I said it out loud and he said, please don't jump in the water. Anywho, we must have sat there, me and him talking for a good half hour, if not a little longer. I don't remember which friend came over and was like, our table's ready. We're like, all right, we can see you. We'll be there in a minute. I think a little time went by too. And I think finally, either him or me, either one, were like, all right, we should probably go and join the crowd. So we sit there. We're eating. It's great. Starts to rain. A little heavier than normal. A waitress is like, you want to go inside, giving us options. We're like, no, not right now. We have a canopy. We have an umbrella above us. Like, right now, we're good. So, snacking, you know, a whole bunch of little appetizers, some drinks, some more drinks. Finally, it starts raining a, it starts raining a little more. So, we move inside. Now, when we get inside, okay, now you got this totally different atmosphere. But it was a good atmosphere. It was beautiful. We were in front of this gigantic fireplace. It was, Like I said, it was dark with like all candlelight, dimmed lighting. Great atmosphere. Everybody's chatting. I remember hearing everyone chatting. I could hear fireworks. It, it was almost like I wasn't even there. So he's sitting to my right. And I'm here. Okay. I kind of sat with my back turned to him the whole time, leaning on him, like very casually. And at this point, like I could feel, once again, I could feel his happy. I could feel his breath on my shoulders. Like it was, it was pretty intense. <sighs> We're eating. I don't know if I went outside to smoke a butt or not, but I ended up going outside and I was like, I'll be right back. I either invited him. Well, he's like, you want company. I don't know how it really went down. At that point, I don't even remember, like, feeling, like, shit-faced. Like, I, I don't really think I was. Like, I was very coherent. I was there. It was just I knew something was kind of going down, but not with him, just kind of, like, in general. I wasn't trying to place it, though. You know what I mean? It was very, very casual. Next thing you know, definitely outside. Now we're around, we go past like the little patio. There's like a little bush over here. So I go to the bush. <laughs> Smoking my butt or whatever. And he comes up behind me. And we're just, we're just holding each other, right? Talking. I turn around. We start, we start kissing. We're both like, whoa. Didn't really expect that. Everything, the way everything just went was, it was just perfect. It was just, it was ideal. It was like legitimately being in a storybook because it was raining. It was really, it was a warm summer night. There was fireworks. The lake is right there. The moonlight is legitimately shining off of the water. It was like, Right out of a, a, a fairy tale. Like, it, it really, truly was. Like, we couldn't keep our hands off of each other. It was, it was like, that intense. Okay? So we did that a few times throughout the night while we're all, now, now that we're all at the restaurant. And <laughs> somehow, by the time we were done in the restaurant, well, like, what do you guys want to do? Like, didn't want the day to end. Like, there's, like, oh, no, it's getting dark. Like, the day, the day's dwindling. It's, it's definitely 
pretty sure the restaurant was like on the verge of closing. We didn't really have a choice but to leave the restaurant. So we're like, all right, we got a camp ball. Let's go, let's go get a couple beers. We'll get some firewood. We'll go back to the camper. Now we did that because they knew, the guys knew we couldn't drive. Me and Mash, we were fine. Not fine like to drive. We would have Ubered. We have no problem Ubering, you know, leaving the car and Ubering, coming back again in the morning. We're only like 10 minutes away from the campsite. The guys were like, no, 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 we'll drive you home because one of them wasn't drinking. We were like, okay, we'll, you know, they'll drive us back to the camper. We're like, okay, great. So we stopped at the swords and all that. The rest of the, the night was like just goes down in history. You know what I mean? All over each other. Can't keep your hands off of each other. It, it was just, it was so intense. Like at this point, we already knew Destiny played a factor. That there was no question. That absolutely hands down no question. Okay. The next morning, they weren't there. You know what I mean? And I said to Mash, she's like, did you get did you get his number? I was like, oh shit. We didn't even exchange numbers. Okay. <laughs> She's like, are you serious? I'm like, I'm dead serious. I'm like, I just fucked that guy's life up. I'm like, but I'm pretty sure I just fucked my life up. Like not really knowing what I was feeling, but knowing that it just it wasn't the end. It was it was there was no way. So <laughs> We were laughing. We had a good rest of the day before we headed home. But that day, when we were all at the bar, the tiki bar was drinking, I had told them what I did for work, right? So we had went on YouTube. I showed them a little of the content, what it looked like, because we wanted to check it out. So my email is linked, right? But I wasn't really thinking anything. Three days later, okay? I think it was like three days later. I get an email. I'm like, oh my god. But I knew, I knew that there was no way that that was the end of what went down. Like, you know when you just know? I knew. Okay? Because it was so, it was so intense when I was to think, when I was to think back, like, holy shit, that's literally like something that happens in a fairy tale. Like, in a story, as a child, playing Cinderella, however the case goes down for you guys, whatever fairy tale you guys read, okay? So, it was, it was magical. It was, it, was, it was priceless. And at one point, I said to myself, I always imagined myself in a scene like that my entire life. Like, that was, you know how people imagine themselves, like, getting married and in churches and what it's going to be like? I had always imagined that scene, but I got the goosebumps, but never really put it together. It took me a few days to kind of, like, really put things together. Actually, it took me a little longer than that. But that's the beauty of everything, right? So, he hits me up through email. Now we're exchanging numbers. We talked... Every day, throughout the day, it was so intense, so much passion, so much love. We knew it was a connection. And I knew it was a connection because I had been reading this story on the board, just not knowing it was going to be, you know, part of mine. So I knew it was pretty special too. So we talked, like I said, four to six weeks. Every single day, every day throughout the day. Like, we both had jobs, we were distracted, but it was a good distraction. It felt really good. At this point, we're telling each other, we knew what we wanted. You know, we had already met up prior to that a couple times. We already saw our future. Already telling each other, I love you. Already envisioned certain stuff, just that inner knowing, right? Now, mind you, he's a real gentleman, so really wanted to get to know me on a whole nother level of practicality, reality, that type of stuff. And me here, I'm spiritual. I'm like, fuck it. Let's go. We're going to dive right into this. I know who you are to me. Like, I'm ready. Like, I've, I've been waiting for you for a very, very long time. 
<laughs> you know? He's like, that's great, but I don't do things that way. And I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, like, we're so, we're so different, but it, it's it's the beauty of who we are because we balance each other out. So, now after, like, six weeks, six to eight weeks, however, it, however the length was, reality starts to kick in. <sighs> Bigger issues start to come to the, the forefront. Start to notice things, realizing things, right? So, we were very back and forth. It was very intense. It is a long distance relationship. So, that was complicated as well. That was, you know, it was tough. There was lots of, lots of blockages. Some that I was even completely unaware of. Okay. But this is why I'm telling the story. So things start to get a little tricky. So we kind of separate and go our ways, but not really. We're like stuck like glue. We couldn't figure it out. We we also know it's spiritual. He's also spiritual himself. So really tough to disengage and disconnect. So we kind of went back and forth, back and forth. But the whole back and forth for the next four, six, eight weeks, okay, that ended up being like, turning into like a four month span now but between that four six eight weeks it really was ups and downs in and outs I want this I don't want this I do want this I, this is what I want it, it was so intense I'd hit go a week without talking I'd go a week without talking and, and then I would go back at him and be like well why aren't you talking like, why are you not saying anything? Like, why, like, what, like, it was just so hard to shake and break, okay? So, it's almost like the distance was necessary. It was, every time we talked, it just became more and more tension. And on top of it, a lot of it was sexual tension, okay? Which is not the easiest to cope with, because then it turns into frustrating tension, right? Um... But there was times where it woke me up to things because there was times he would say to me through text, "What? You know, I love you." But it's like to me that's like a big question mark. Why can't you just say, "Courtney, I love you"? Why do you gotta turn it into a question? So I already knew he had a hard time with feelings and that he expressed differently. But for me, this was so important because it was such an emotional experience for me and such a, a, a spiritual relationship on top of it that almost the whole entire time, it was like me. Trying to get him to reveal how he felt about me. And, and I wasn't saying it. Like, he texted me one day. And I'm going to share some personal stuff because I'm going to tell you about a couple self-discovery things that I, that I learned along this journey, which really woke me up. He texted me. I feel like, you know, mind you, we're still going back and forth this whole time, even though at this point we're not seeing each other. We just didn't know how to break what this was. So he said, I just feel like... I'm convinced, like, this is not going to work. Like, you're trying to convince me to tell you how much I love you and how much this is a meant-to-be scenario. And I'm not even really picking up on it. All I know is that this whole entire time, I'm thinking to myself, why can't this guy just truly tell me how he feels? Because we already know what we want. We already know we want a life. We already, we already know. It was... I didn't feel like I was rushing it, but I was just ready. And for him, he, he just... He doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? Like, steps. You want steps, you know? Um, he doesn't just want to dive in. And me, I'm like, Ooh, let's go. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Like, I know who you are, you know? So I think I, I didn't know who you are. So he's like, I really need you to understand. He's like, it kind of definitely pushed me away. Like, it kind of ruined us, Court. He's like, do you understand? 
that? And I'm thinking to myself, no, because this whole time, I was so wrapped up on knowing how he felt that that's what even got me in this mess because this whole entire time, I just wanted, I was waiting for him to reveal how he felt about me. So it was like pushing little buttons and saying little things to kind of get him to say it. But he had picked up on that. I hadn't have picked up on that. You know what I mean? And it was like, okay, well, he's, he's actually right. Like, instead of letting it happen naturally, because I was so convinced of who he was to me, and of just waiting for him to express how he truly feels. That I, I forgot that this type of stuff should happen naturally. Not not forced. You know, not not on my time. You know, things like that. You forget about stuff like that when you when you have an inner knowing. Okay. He had made another comment to me, which was a huge epiphany for me. Because then I realized like, holy fuck, I, I really was doing that. And it was sad because at this point it's like over, back and forth tension, bullshit, arguing, going in circles like you wouldn't believe for four, six, eight weeks. And then it was like a massive wake up call. And then he said to me, so now you want a commitment? Now you want to commit? And I was like, where the fuck have you been? I wanted to commit this whole time. We already talked about stepping in to something. You know what I mean? So I'm like, what the fuck? Why is he asking me now if I'm ready to commit? Like, I've been ready this whole time. And then I realized, I'm like, holy shit, Court. This whole time of this back and forth, back and forth, it was me pushing away. I want this, I don't. So a lot of that had to do with fear. There's a lot of boundaries that we needed to work out too, and there really wasn't much compromising on morals and beliefs because we were both very headstrong okay so there, there was other additional factors too okay but the the moral of this was two of the most important valuable life lessons that i took from that don't you ever try to force someone to tell you how they feel or when somebody's ready to actually do something don't try to convince somebody and i don't even think i really recognized i was even doing it okay um, and then back to the whole commitment thing, I was like, what the fuck? We've been talking about this for freaking almost four months. Like, of course I'm ready to commit. Like, what are you talking about? Dedicate time for him to really get to know me, yada, yada. On a whole nother level. And, and like I said, for me, it was harder because I already knew who he was to me. So because of that, that took away from the whole getting to know each other on a different level as well. But then I realized when it comes to commitment, that's attached to abandonment issues. And I had to address that because it really was me that pushed him away. Off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. And here I am blaming it on my emotions that he's just not seeing it. But in all reality, he was. He was trying to explain it to me. I wasn't seeing it because I was so wrapped up on getting him to reveal how he felt, that I, I couldn't see what was happening. This whole entire time, I had made a wish in 2018 going into 2019. And it was like an epiphany for me. Because I was like, I got the goosebumps. I was like, holy shit. My wish has been in front of me the whole damn time. But because I wasn't letting stuff unfold naturally, and I was really trying to get him to reveal how he felt about me because I knew what I felt it, but I needed to hear it because I needed an emotional relationship. I needed that aspect, and I wasn't getting it. So it was back and forth, back and forth, you know? And I was like, holy shit. Everything that I asked for and someone was le legitimately right in front of me. My wish was, was right in front of me the whole entire time without me even realizing it. Because of my own emotional feelings. 
So then I realized that push-pull in me pushing away was more about me and my abandonment issues and stuff being triggered. So I learned that I do push things away out of fear or are not hearing what I want to hear or something not going down in, in my time frame. Except we don't realize this in the time because we're so fixated on on certain stuff that there's, there's not much compromising. There's If you really can't see what's happening, there's no way a relationship's going to work, right? There's, there's no way our relationship would have worked if I didn't come to some self-realizations. On, on what was really happening and unfortunately I learned that at the end okay sometimes don't we all but it was the epiphany moments that that made it so eye-opening for me okay um and, and how I got my head wrapped around how I knew he felt about me I was fixated without realizing it because of what I do for work too, I'm a tarot reader. I, I, I know when someone's hiding their feelings or, or wants to say something, but they're not saying something. Like I can see it, I can feel it as clear as day. I read every day, you know. And that's why I try to teach you guys these things, you know, how sometimes that can impact your life. And this is why I don't want to know certain parts of my future because it fucks shit up. Okay? But I'm realizing that. But never try to force whether you realize you're doing it or not. You know what I mean? Like, this type of shit happen, has to happen naturally. You know what I mean? Um, in the midst of all this, too, the last few nights I've been shutting my eyes. And time is still. Like, everything just stops and it pauses in my, in my brain, in my vision. And I'm like, what is spirit trying to tell me? And they really were trying to tell me time stands still. The there is no time there is no time frame on love there's no time frame on being in the moment when your soul feels ready and things are flowing that's when it's time you know so don't get fixated on dates times feelings how something should go um when to compromise when when not to to compromise um so I learned some pretty harsh things. I, I, I learned things about commitments. I learned things about abandonment issues, trust. Not really trust issues, but it is kind of linked. Um, not giving time restraints, you know, and, and letting things really happen naturally the way they should. And um, along the way, it really was about self-discovery. Because I I'm telling you, if I hadn't uh, learned and had epiphany after epiphany of what was really happening, and if I wouldn't have figured it out, we would have got nowhere. Nowhere. That relationship never would have worked because I wasn't recognizing things on my end that were very detrimental to the whole situation, you know? Um, so I wanna make sure um, I, I touched base on the real important epiphanies that I had before I wrap this up. <laughs> So it's like, did I, did I really, did I really ruin my relationship or did I take a journey and, and really discover more about myself, things that were necessary in order to have a, a type of re relationship that's going to work, okay, and not just on my terms and my needs. Um, so 
So if you can take anything from this, if you have a lot of ups and downs and in and outs and, and you tend to push away from certain situations, there's a little bit of a commitment issue, which, which is then boils down to abandonment issues. Okay, so certain stuff will be triggered, but it, it address them. I figured out with me, it, it boiled down to I need an emotional relationship. I know what I want from someone, from a relationship that's going to work for me. Um, let things happen naturally. Let things unfold. Don't try to get somebody to truly reveal how they feel because it just, it causes frustration and tension and, and it's just, it's not necessary. Um, because I was trying to get him to reveal what I felt he felt. You know, so I just I just wanted to share a little bit of my my love story and um, my journey to self discovery of very important things. So I hope it helps you. And um, for right now, this is the end of my story. Or. Or is it just the beginning? I love you guys.